Although you may be happy with the color rendition of the Nikon D3400's default profiles, let's explore some of the many options and tools that Nikon provides to modify and enhance your images. Some of these options are available only from the P, S, A, and M modes. I'll start with white balance, then demonstrate how color profiles work, and finally show you some cool effects. Color can be dramatically affected by light, the cold blue of daylight, or the warm amber of incandescent bulbs. The D3400's auto white balance usually adjusts properly, but when it doesn't, I take control. This is a case where live view is your friend, as our eyes adjust to compensate when seeing an image in the optical viewfinder. Live view will show you exactly how the sensor sees the image. Hmm, a little yellow. Press I to open the interactive settings menu. In live view, the effect is visible while it's adjusted. The default white balance is auto, and there are six presets for specific situations. Although it takes a little work, the preset manual is the one I prefer, particularly if the lighting condition is challenging. The alternate access point is the main menu. On the I menu, not sure if you noticed fluorescent 4, press right to see all seven fluorescent options. Scroll down to preset on the second page and press right. Two ways to capture a custom white balance, direct measurement or from a photograph. Measure isn't available in LV mode, so I'm switching back to viewfinder. Back to measure and confirm that we're overwriting the previous settings. And point the camera at a white or middle gray object in the lighting conditions I want to capture. Press and hold the OK button until pre-flashes, press the shutter. The screen confirms the data has been acquired and the viewfinder flashes GD, bottom left. If it says no GD, try again. Back to live view. You can see whites are white, and the scene is now properly balanced. Back to the menu for a minute. Press right on any of the options except preset. Further color tuning can be done, across the blue-amber axis, or up-down for the green-magenta spectrum. This screen isn't interactive, so it may take some trial and error. But just a note, in viewfinder mode, the preset capture can be activated by just holding the OK button on the pre option, which is slightly faster. A second set of color adjustment options are the picture controls. Again, there are a set of presets, which can be previewed interactively in Live View. Standard provides the familiar Nikon colors. Neutral is a slightly less enhanced version, designed for later processing in photo editing software. Vivid accentuates the primary colors for an enhanced color look. Monochrome, black and white. Portrait, less sharpening, slightly warmer tones. Landscape, accentuating the greens and blues of trees and sky. And flat, even more neutral than neutral, for making adjustments later. I'd recommend this one for video, particularly if you're going to do color correction in post. Both flat and neutral save files with less processing, which means that none of the standard adjustments have to be undone first. These selections can also be made using the full menu, where a right press reveals six basic controls and a master control called quick adjust. As a rule, the adjustments are rather subtle, even with a test chart. For example, with saturation, here's zero, minus three, and plus three. It's actually hard to demonstrate the effects in a video or with a test chart. Best to take photographs of each of the settings one by one for personal evaluation. These are powerful tools, and mastery will take time. Experimentation is key to learning when each setting and adjustment might be best applied. When a preset has been adjusted, an asterisk appears beside. After making adjustments, use the delete garbage can to reset back to the default preset. These settings are applied to JPEG files, 
When the camera is saving RAW plus JPEG, white balance and color settings are saved with the JPEG versions, although the settings are recorded alongside the RAW file for reference. This means that if the setting is monochrome, the RAW file will be in color, the JPEG black and white. With the RAW files, you can make these adjustments using photo editing software. Although, strictly speaking, they're more than just color adjustments, the effects position on the dial also offers some interesting options. Again, best selected and previewed in Live View. Use the back dial to select. Night Vision takes high ISO monochrome pictures. They're grainy, and it's best used with manual focus. Super Vivid provides exaggerated colors and high contrast. Pop, just exaggerated colors. Photo Illustration, well, kinda gimmicky, I want it darker. Press OK to make adjustments to the effect. The toy camera effect, which simulates a cheap plastic lens, can also be adjusted for vividness and vignetting, the darkness around the edges. Miniature effect works best when looking down, making the scene look like a miniature. The technical term for this is tilt shift. Only a small region in the center is in focus. The width of the area can be adjusted by pressing up and down or sideways for a portrait orientation image. Selective Color provides a complex set of options for taking black and white photos with one or more color accents. Press OK, point the square at the color, press up to select, then adjust the intensity. Use the back dial to select up to three colors. Silhouette increases contrast. High key shifts the dynamic range to the right for a brighter image. Low key does the opposite for a darker image. Under the right circumstances, each of these may provide some useful assist. And although they're all interesting and fun, my only issue is that I have trouble finding the right situation or remembering to use them. I've made several videos to help you master the D3400. They're listed in the description below. Uh, thanks for watching. Please use the comments area below to ask questions. I do reply to all civil and relevant comments.